And uh, before I begin, I'm going to show uh, just a couple of short videos and a couple pictures here. But before I do that, I want to give honor to my pastor here. Um, and uh, pastor, I truly, truly do thank you. And I just want to give this short little testimony here. I've been praying over things uh, in regards to Cambodia and, and just bringing things before the Lord. And I've been sharing with pastor there. And, uh, and I came back to pastor the following day, and, and uh, I want him to know, pastor, as I'm praying, I believe God will open the doors, et cetera, et cetera. But I've also told the Lord in my prayers that whatever a pastor says, whatever he counsels me on, whatever he shares, Lord, I'm going to obey my pastor. Amen. And I'm saying that tonight, church, because you see, I am blessed, yes, to be one who travels through Cambodia. I know God has called me there. But as I shared with Pastor, Pastor, you think that anything of this here would have happened without you? Amen. Without Pastor, none of this here would have taken place in my life. And I'm so thankful to have such an awesome, wonderful pastor and such an awesome and wonderful pastor's wife, Sister Blankenship there. I thank you for everything and everything and everything that you encourage. Amen. Our pastor. Amen. And, uh, and everything and everything you go through as a result of us. <laughs> and happy birthday. And like I said this morning, may you have a million, a million, a million more. And I do mean a million more because we're not, we're passing on into eternity, and eternity never ceases. Amen? Praise the Lord. So with that, uh, Brother Eli, would you show the videos there, first of all? This is about our church building and what's happening here. Gonna be there as well. You see the door open over there. Okay. We got one more video. Amen. Oh, only one. Okay, I'm sorry. All right, then we have about four pictures I want to show you. Amen. But I want us to thank the Lord too and keep everything here in prayer. The Lord has protected us. He's protected the building there. And you're going to see some pictures here, some uh, uh, the, the results of the flooding there and, and uh, the rainy season. It's been a very severe rainy season there. Just keep that on for a minute, please. Very severe rainy season in Cambodia this year. Started early and is still going on there. But the hand of the Lord is upon what we're doing here, and we want to thank God for all that he is doing and protecting our building, protecting the land around it there. And so these are just four pictures here to, to let you see what, what the people in Cambodia are struggling over this year. Amen. That's one picture here. This is their home. Amen. This is outside of their home. This is their homes. Amen. What you see there, those racks, that's what they sleep on. Those are their beds and they sleep on out there. And here it all is. This, this is just, just about four pictures, just four pictures here of some of the things that you see that are going all around in Cambodia. So not only pray for our building, and I've been praying that God would, again, anoint all the workers that are working there, amen, bring glory, glory to God, but also pray for the people of Cambodia, because as you see, as there are many needs there and what they're suffering there, Jesus is their only answer. Amen. And Jesus is our only answer. Praise the Lord. Well, God bless you. Amen. If you'll stand with me again tonight. And I want to go into the, the Gospel of Luke to begin with here. And I simply want to title this message here tonight, The Manifestation. Amen. Manifesting the glory of God. Praise the Lord. And I just want to share with you that before I begin to minister this word here, uh, I've had this word going on within my spirit there for a couple of weeks. I was not aware of what pastor was going to preach on this morning here. So I did not go home and just pull up a, a message here for tonight. But this is in harmony 
for what Pastor so graciously brought to us this morning here. Amen. And I believe the Holy Ghost is giving us part two here tonight. And so if we can just open up our hearts here to the Word of God tonight there and let the Holy Ghost speak to us, show us the things that are happening presently here and what God wants to do with his church in this world. In Luke chapter 4 and verse 18, it says, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because... He has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captives, and recovering of sight to the blind, to set at liberty them that are bruised. Amen. Can we just worship God one more time before we enter in here? Father, in the name of Jesus Christ. Now, God, we've gathered together here now, Father, in the name of Jesus now. And, God, where two or three are gathered together, Lord, in your name. Oh, God, you're here in our midst now, dear God. Help us, God, to reach out to you, dear God. Help us, God, that there not be any distractions in our minds, in our hearts, God. Father, that you receive all the glory and all the praise. And, God, the things that the Holy Ghost wants to speak to us here tonight. God, help me to deliver these things, God, in the name of Jesus. And help us, God, to receive receive them in the name of Jesus. Help them to transport, transpire our lives, Father, in the name of Jesus. Dear God, and you above all, Father, in all things, God, God, be glorified here in the name of Jesus. Amen. Praise the Lord. Can you just worship him? Clap your hands. Amen. Shout unto the Lord with a voice of triumph. Hallelujah. Oh, yes. That name of Jesus, amen. And we just sang, how great thou art, amen. And God is the great God. He's not just a great God. He is the great God, amen. He is the great God. And he has the great name, amen. The name that is above all names, amen. And we just sung on the name of Jesus, hallelujah. Praise God. You may be seated. These are familiar verses of Scripture here. Amen. But I want to highlight three words here. First of all, brokenhearted. Amen. It says here, he's, he's been sent to heal the brokenhearted. Brokenhearted means crushed. The person's heart is crushed. It's shattered. Broken to shivers. Bruised. And the thoughts and the feelings of the mind, broken. Amen. He's come. Amen. They may heal all the brokenhearted. And I don't know if there's anybody here tonight that you fit this category. But if you've received the Holy Ghost and you've been baptized in Jesus' name and you've had that experience of speaking of the tongues, amen. I want you to know, I pray you'd understand, amen, that God has done this work in you. I believe perhaps the devil has been lying to some, amen, and you're still carrying around the brokenhearted that Jesus Christ has come already to heal. And if you've not experienced that, you don't feel you've experienced that, you can have that here tonight. You do not have to leave this altar. You don't have to leave the presence of God, amen, without being healed in spirit, soul, and body. Can you say amen? Amen. The next word here is deliverance, to preach deliverance to the captives. Let me tell you something tonight. Before any of us came to Jesus, before any of us here knew Jesus, we were all captive to the enemy. We were all captive to the devil. And that's why we lived our lives so contrary to the Word of God. That's why we lived our lives so contrary to who God is and God's holiness. Because every one of us here, amen, were captive, amen. And that's why every one of us here in our lives, we have experienced the broken heart. Amen. But Jesus Christ, he's come to heal us from the brokenheartedness. He's come to deliver us from being a captive. Amen. Can you say praise the Lord? And the next word here, amen, to, amen, to preach the deliverance of the captives. Amen. Praise the Lord. And so the captives here, all right, deliverance first of all. It's freedom, okay, to preach deliverance to the captives. Amen. Praise the Lord. But there's also that word deliverance. Deliverance means freedom. It means pardon. It means forgiveness. It means liberty. It means remission. And the Lord Jesus Christ, he's delivered us. I said, he has delivered us. I said, he has delivered you. 
You know, sometimes you've got to fight what's, what's, what's going on upstairs, upstairs here, amen. You've got to fight your thoughts, amen, casting down vain imaginations. And I'm going to show you here through the scriptures here how we manifest the glory of God, how the church will manifest the glory of God to this lost and this dying world. And I've already said about captives, amen. A captive simply is a prison of war, a captive, amen. It means to be captured and to be taken. And all of this here, we all fit in that category before we came, I said before we came to Jesus Christ, before we were born again of the water and the spirit, before we had the blood applied to us, before we knew the love of God, before we experienced the love of God. Because you see, the Bible said the love of God is shed abroad in our hearts. The love of God lives inside of us. How? Through the Holy Ghost. Amen. And if I have the Holy Ghost, amen, and I have the love of God in my life, then I have the peace of God. I have the joy of God. I have the victory in the Lord Jesus Christ. I have everything that God has for me and everything that God's promised. You have everything. You have everything through the name of Jesus. You have everything through believing, amen, that God has ordained for you. Can you say praise the Lord? Now, with all that being said, I want to look at a couple other words here before we go on. I was actually going to give an introduction, but my introduction got longer than the message here. So I said, Lord, Lord, how do I put all this together? He said, okay, do this part here first, and then go into the introduction. So we haven't, we haven't even got into the introduction yet, okay? But here, <laughs> praise the Lord, if you would just take a moment here to listen here now. Lord, help us now. Because here comes the gospel, and that's what came to us, the gospel of Jesus Christ. A gospel of Jesus Christ. And I'm going to say that again because there's a lot of different gospels out there, but you have the gospel of Jesus Christ. You have the true good news of the Lord Jesus Christ. Praise the Lord. So in John 8 and 32, it says here, Jesus saying here, and you shall know the truth. You got that? That's the word I'm looking at here tonight here. And you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. Does anybody here know the truth tonight? Has anybody here experienced the truth tonight? You see, if you've experienced Jesus Christ, you have experienced truth. And if you've experienced Jesus Christ, amen, you have experienced freedom. You've been set free in the name of Jesus, amen. John 14 and 6 says, Jesus said unto them, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. He says, I am the way. I am truth. So if you have Jesus, you have truth. If you have truth, you have Jesus. They are one and the same. Praise the Lord. And truth does not lie. And every word from God speaks truth. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. Finally, John 14, 36 says, If therefore, if the Son therefore, shall make you free. It says, you shall be free indeed. You hear that? If the Son sets you free, you shall be free indeed. Praise the Lord. And I'm thankful for God, amen, that I have through the blood of Jesus Christ, through the name, through the new birth, amen, through his love, I've been set free. You have been set free. Well, free from what? Free from anything and all things that would want to bind you. Past, present, future. Now, I'd like to look up 2 Corinthians 5, 17 to 20. Now, look what these scriptures here declare. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is what? He is a new creature. All things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. All things have become new. I'm a brand new creature in Christ Jesus. I'm a brand new creation in Christ Jesus. Praise the Lord. And all things are of God who has reconciled us to himself by Jesus Christ and has given to us the ministry of reconciliation. To wit that God was in Christ, reconciling the world unto himself, not imputing their trespasses unto them, and has committed unto us the word of reconciliation. Now, now then, 
We are ambassadors for Christ. As though God did beseech you by us. We pray you in Christ that be ye reconciled to God. We are in this lost, dying world ambassadors, amen, for the Lord Jesus Christ. And I believe that God wants us to know, God wants us to understand, if you are struck, see, we're talking about the church here. Those things we talked about being crushed, those things being captive, amen, those things needing deliverance, amen. Yes, the world outside still needs all of those blessings. They need their deliverance, amen. They need to be set free. They need to be healed. They need all that God has, is willing to provide and is there to give. But church... I believe there's still some in the church. There are things that happened to you in your past. And it's hindering you from being all that God has called you to be. We are an ambassador for Jesus Christ. We are not an ambassador for the devil. And you see, when you dwell upon what took place prior to the new birth, when you dwell upon the things that hurt you before the new birth, when you dwell upon all the hurts and the pains and all that anybody's done you wrong prior to the birth, prior to becoming a new creation in Christ Jesus, amen, then you may not recognize this in this sense here, but you'll still be an ambassador for the little devil. Because see, what God says he has done, I said, what God says he has done, he's done. Once again, what God says, he set the captives free. We were all captives, but not anymore. Amen. My peace I give unto you. Not like the world has, amen. And when God gives us his peace, amen, that peace abides within us. That peace goes with us. When we get up in the morning, we wake up with his peace. When we go through our day in his peace. When we go to sleep at nighttime in his peace, amen. We are ambassadors. We are a witness for the Lord Jesus Christ, not for the enemy. Amen. Praise the Lord. So, what else are we free from? We're free from sin. I said, we're free from sin. Romans 16, 17, 18 said, but God be thanked that you were. Now look how God speaks here. He doesn't say you are sinners. He says you are saints. Amen. He doesn't call us sinners. Yes, we're all sinners. We're all saved by the grace of God. Amen. But I am not and will not claim and I will not speak that I am a sinner today. I am a child of God. Amen. Praise the Lord, and I will not allow come out of my mouth. Well, you know we're going to sin. No, because the Scriptures declare, amen, let not sin once be named amongst us, amen. And if the Scriptures declare that, that means I can live it. I'm not going to say we'll not stumble here. I'm not going to say we wouldn't fall here. But if I stumble, I fall. The Bible says the righteous fall seven times, but they get up. So I'm going to keep on getting up. I'm going to keep on getting up. I'm going to keep on getting up. But I will not confess that I am a sinner. I was a sinner. I'm saved by God's grace. Can you say praise the Lord? Amen. So, he goes on and says here, but be God be thanked that you were servants of sin, but you have obeyed from the heart that form of doctrine which was delivered you, being then made free from sin. Free from sin. Can you get that? Free from sin. You became servants of righteousness. You are now servants of righteousness. You are now servants of sin. Praise God. Amen. Fear, fear, free from fear. Amen. I pray to God that there's not a child of God here tonight, that you're living under the bondage of fear. Because the Word of God says, for God has not given us the spirit of fear, but of power. That's the Holy Ghost. And that's the love of God that's resident within us, that goes wherever we are, stays with us, never leaves us, never forsakes us. Amen. Power and love. Amen. For God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and love and of a sound mind. I've told a couple of people recently, what God has given to me, no one can take from me. And what God has given to you, amen, no one can take from you. The only way you and I lose anything that God's given to us is because we forfeit it. But no one can take what God has given. Okay. Free from death. The Bible says, Jesus said unto her, I am the resurrection and the life. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. And whosoever liveth and believeth in me shall never die. 
And if we understand that we have been made alive, we sit in heavenly places in Christ Jesus, this body, this flesh, yes, it will die. It will go one day. Thank God it will go. Because until that goes, we cannot be released from this body of flesh. Can you say amen? We cannot live for eternity still live in this body of flesh. But Jesus said they that believe shall never die. You see, we're never going to die. We're just going to be transferred, amen, from this world unto his glorious world. So I don't have to fear death any longer. Praise the Lord. It's only if you don't have Jesus that you should be fearing death because you don't have, you have the unknown to face in you. But since coming to Jesus, I don't have the unknown anymore. I know where I'm going. I know who's going to meet me on the other side. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Okay. Free from Satan's powers. You see, you're covered in the blood. You're washed in the blood. And one thing the devil cannot come through. He cannot come through the blood of Jesus Christ. Amen. Again, you are covered. You are sealed. Amen. By the blood of Jesus. And Satan cannot harm you. Satan cannot control you. He cannot come through the blood. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for the blood. Amen. Well, now we're going for the introduction. Mm. Hallelujah. The power of your faith. You see, anything and everything that we receive from God, everything is through your faith. You say, amen. But without faith is, and we know these scriptures, but without, we know them. I'm going to say it again. We know them by memory. But are we living them? What are we doing with the Word of God that we confess? What are we doing with the Word of God that we can say, hello, and we say we believe, okay? But it says here, but without faith it is impossible to please Him. That's God. For he that cometh to God must believe, again, must believe that He is, and that He is a rewarder of them that diligently seek Him. Can you say, praise the Lord? As you read and study the scriptures, you will discover that there is no limit. Let me, let me tell you something here tonight. There is no limit as to what God will do for you on behalf of your faith. I said that again. On behalf of your faith. And the scriptures prove it according to your faith. So be it. Not according to somebody else's faith. Amen. Whatever you desire, whatever you pray for, whatever you will believe for, according to your faith, it will be manifested. God says so. Amen. Amen. So I want to take you to Joshua for a minute here. Joshua chapter 10, verse 12 to 13. Then spake Joshua to the Lord in the day when the Lord delivered up the Amorites before the children of Israel. And he said in the sight of Israel, Son, stand still thou upon Gibeon. And thou moon in the valley of Aljon, and the sun stood still, and the moon stayed until the people had avenged themselves upon their enemies. Is this not written in the book of Jasher? So the sun stood still in the midst of heaven and hastened not to go down about a whole day. Okay. The power of your faith. Can I tell you something about Joshua here? Joshua never, 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 never imagined ahead of time. He never, ever, ever considered when he looked up the sun, the moons one day or any other day, right? Well, sun, moon, I'm going to tell you what to do one day. He never went to the people and said, hey, watch me one day. I'm going to get on this mountain here, and I'm going to speak to the sun, and I'm going to speak to this moon here, amen, and the sun and the moon is going to obey my command. The thought never entered into him until the day it came when he needed it. You see, what Joshua did, amen, and this is how faith works, praise the Lord. If you have faith, see, Joshua clothed himself every day with faith. Joshua walked every day in faith. And you and I are to clothe ourselves upon with faith every day. You know, faith alone may not produce a certain miracle that day, but faith in God will keep you right. Faith in God will keep you blessed. Faith in God will keep you at all times. Can I say that? Amen? That's faith. Faith in God. Faith in God's Word. How you behave yourself. You know, you may want to get upset at somebody, get angry at somebody, but the Bible says don't. You have a hard time forgiving somebody? God says forgive. 
Amen. So faith, amen, in God is faith in his word. And faith in his word leads us to believe. And because we believe, we obey. And because we obey, our lives are blessed. Amen. Our lives are blessed. Praise God. Amen. So there come a day and there come a situation. And if you're walking in faith, and I'm going to show it to you tonight, okay? But if you're walking in faith and you put your faith garment on every day and you praise the Lord when you wake up, when you get dressed, you put your natural clothes on, you make sure you put your faith clothes on. Amen. You cover yourself with faith in the name of Jesus Christ. And you begin to start your day and worship him. You begin to start your day, amen, to thank God. You put that faith on and God will take you through that day. And God will take you through that day. And God will take you through that day. But there will come a day because of your faith in God. And God has seen your consistent faith there. Amen. And you want your faith to grow in the Lord. There will come a day when one day you may have to speak to something. And that's when the unction of the Holy Ghost. I said, that's the unction because, see, it's not you. Because you see what it is. The Bible says, without God, with, without, without Him, we could do nothing. So it's not us getting on Well, we're going to decide to do this. But because you're walking in faith, you're walking consistency, you're walking loving God, and God sees that He can depend upon you. And then one day He says, hey! And you'll be standing there, and you'll be standing in some circumstance, whatever it might be. You can be here at the altar, and God can give you a word for somebody. You can be at the altar here, and you pray for somebody. You may not be expecting it, but if you're carrying your faith, and you're dressed in your faith, and you're robed in your faith, amen, God will tap you. And that's where all the works come through. Amen, you got that? Now, somehow I paired this up with the, seven, with the ten virgins. We all know about the ten virgins, okay? Okay. Because we're talking about faith here. Okay, we're talking about the power of your faith. Praise the Lord. Well, Matthew 25, 1 and 4 says, Then shall the kingdom of heaven be likened unto ten virgins, which took their lamps and went forth to meet the bridegroom. And five of them were wise, and five were foolish. They that were foolish took the lamps and took no oil with them. But the wise took oil in their vessels with their lamps. Something struck out to me when I was reading that. I've read this and you've read this. Maybe you've seen this 100 years ago and I just never saw it until yesterday or a couple days ago. Is that all right? Okay. But it says here, yeah, there were 10 of them. There were five wise and there were five foolish, right? And they were all going forth. Now, they were all going forth in the same direction. They're all going forth with anticipation of meeting the bridegroom. That means they're all marching the same way. You got that now? Okay. And that's where we are. We're all marching towards the bridegroom because we want to see Jesus because he's the bridegroom. Amen. But here's something else that I saw here. He says, they that were foolish took their lamps. Now, what is the lamp? Well, the scripture says in 119, Psalm 119, 05, Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. So it says here, amen, they that were foolish took their lamps. In other words, they carried the Bible. They had the Bible in their hand. Wherever they went, they took the Bible. Boom, 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 boom. But they didn't take any oil. That means they weren't reading the Bible. That means they weren't feeding off the word of God. They took it with them. <clears throat> hey, look at everybody. But they didn't take any oil. They didn't take any Holy Ghost. And I understand it's the Holy Ghost that leads us and guides us into all truth. Amen. The Holy Ghost is our teacher. Can you say amen? So here you got the five foolish. They're going in the same direction as the five wise. Amen. But they're just carrying the Bible. They're not participating of the word of God. Let that sink in. Because look what it says about the five wise. It says here, but the wise took oil. That's the Holy Ghost. Where? In their vessels. They took oil in their vessels. They took the Holy Ghost with them. Amen with 
their lamps with the Word of God. The Word without the Spirit is not alive. And the Spirit without the Word is not alive. Amen? They took oil in their vessels. And they took the lamps, the Word of God, with them. It's not enough to have a Bible. It's not enough to proclaim, I'm going to go meet the bridegroom, and you're foolish, you're not prepared. Can you say amen? Okay, praise God. The church is designed for one purpose. Again, the church is designed for one purpose. To manifest the glory of God to this lost world. That's your purpose, church. Church, your purpose is to manifest the glory of God to a lost and dying world. If that was not our purpose, the Lord would have come and he would have taken us out of this world and left everything behind. As long as the church is in this world, that is the purpose of the church. The church, every person who has been born again of water and spirit, according to the Gospel of John, chapter 3, verses 3 and 5, born again of water and spirit, and fulfilled for the first time, as we read in the book of Acts, 2 and 38. Repentant, Baptized in Jesus' name and filled with the Holy Ghost. And don't you dare buy into anything less. I don't care how nice people may appear to be. I'll tell you what, there's a whole lot of nice people out there, but when you get one-on-one -on -one sometimes with them and you begin to talk the name of Jesus and you begin to talk about baptism, you talk about the Holy Ghost, speaking in other tongues, let me tell you how nice a Christian they pretend to be, the true will come out. Amen? Don't you dare settle for anything less than what was preached on the day of Pentecost, the beginning of the church, and throughout all the scriptures. Amen? That's the church. That's the church. The church has the blood of Jesus Christ applied. Amen? And because the blood has been applied to us, all our sins are washed away. Jesus is now our righteousness, and we walk and we dwell and we live in his righteousness by the blood, the shed blood of Jesus Christ. Can you say amen? The church has received power, and that is the Holy Ghost. And you shall receive power after the Holy Ghost has come upon you, and you shall be witnesses unto me. Can you say, praise the Lord? Well, I want to talk a moment here about being a witness, praise the Lord. So what is a witness? Because Jesus Christ said, and you shall. He didn't say, maybe. He expects you to be a witness. He's given you the power, the gift, amen, the promise of the Holy Ghost. He dwells within us. Promising never to leave us, never forsake us. With us always, no matter what circumstances, no matter what we face, no matter what trials. i got to tell you something, church, here tonight. Stop dwelling upon the circumstances of this world. You are in this world, but you are not of this world. Amen. And when we can go back to the days of Enoch, you know, Enoch lived in a very, very wicked, wicked, wicked time. But he showed and he declared the manifestation of God's glory in his time. And because he declared the manifestation of God's glory to the people of his day, amen, God took them. Amen. He came early and he took them. And when you and I fulfill the purpose of the Lord Jesus Christ, there's a good day coming, amen, that because we've manifested the glory. I didn't say everybody in this world is going to receive the manifestation of God's glory, but I will tell you this. Those who see the manifestation of God's glory and those who reject the manifestation of God's glory through you, amen, and they perish, they're going to remember, I did see it. I had a taste of it, but I rejected it. I turned away from it. Didn't think I needed it at that time. Amen. It's not a matter of you manifesting the, glory, the, the, the manifestation of God's glory that you're going to save everybody. God would want everyone to be saved. But you're a witness. 
And so here's that witness. You know what the witness means? The word witness means? It means you become a martyr. You mean I've got to die? Well, Galatians chapter 20. I'm sorry, first, chapter 2, verse 20. Look what Paul says. He says, I am crucified with Christ. Amen. Nevertheless, I live. Yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. Yes, martyr. We die out to the self. When you look at the word martyr, you think, okay, the physical death. Amen. There is the physical death. There are those who have given their lives in that respect there for the name of Jesus. Amen. But yet, you and I are to become martyrs today. We are to die out to this self. We are to die out of this world. We have no business in this world other than to show forth the manifestation of God's glory. Amen. You are a record of him. That's what the witness means. You are a record of Jesus Christ, praise the Lord. You are the evidence and you are the proof of him, amen. You are the knowledge of him, having knowledge through experience. And let me go a little step here further. I think it's wonderful. I think it's great. I believe it's pleasing to the Lord. I know we gather together here on Wednesdays and other times here, and we bring all the needs of various people, amen. Sick people, dying people, people need salvation. But you know, you get a phone call, and somebody is dying, or somebody is sick. You have the power. I'll show you in the scriptures here. You have the power to say, wait, I'm coming over. You have the power to go over there. And then in the name of Jesus Christ. You see, if you're putting on your garment of faith, amen, and somebody calls, amen, they're calling you because they have that need. They're calling you because they know you can do something or they believe you can do something. And rather say, okay, we'll just pray for you. You have the power to get up. You have the power to go to the home. You have the power to go to that hospital. You have the power to go. And in the name of Jesus Christ, lay hands on them and pray the prayer of faith there. Pray in the name of Jesus for whatever circumstances there is. And I'm going to show you here tonight some of the things that just recently taken place. Praise the Lord. But you are the church. He's called us to be a witness. And the Bible says here, as Jesus is. Hello? It doesn't say how Jesus will be. He says, as Jesus is presently, amen. Where am I? So, are, so is the church in this world. And 1 John 4 and 17 says, Herein is our love made perfect, that we may have boldness in the day of judgment. I'll tell you what, there's any day you want to have boldness in the day of judgment. But if you don't have boldness today, you're not going to have that boldness in the day of judgment. You got that? I mean, if you don't have boldness for the Lord Jesus Christ today, if you're fearful, amen, doubtful, unbelieving, you will not have boldness in the day of judgment. Amen? So have boldness in the day of judgment. Why? Because, because as he is, that's how he is, that's how God is, amen, so are we in this world. And we are like him in this world because we are his body. Amen? We are as he is. I don't care how you feel. I don't care how you want to add all this up here. The word of God cannot be broken. And the word of God says, as he is. So what is Jesus doing? What does Jesus want you to do? Where does Jesus want you to be? Who does Jesus want you to be ministering to? Because see, in all his earthly ministry, I don't believe there was a day he ever took off. I'm not saying you can't take a day off. I can't say you can't have some time with your family. But you know what? What you and I, because we are here to manifest the glory of God, you're given 90% time for your flesh, 90% time for all the things. Oh, we're all happy family here. We're going to Chick-fil-A here. We're going to beach. We're doing this. We're doing that. We're doing all that. Hey, those things are wonderful, I guess. Nothing wrong per se. But if that's your life, you see, you're missing the purpose that God has called you to. You're missing the purpose what the church is here for. i got to tell you something. Amen. Yeah, you and I will sacrifice. You and I will struggle sometimes. You and I will experience certain things here. But you know, when you and I cross over into the land of glory, let me tell you something. All what we experience will be forgotten. It will no longer be remembered. Amen. 
And not only will we not remember it, amen, we're going into a place, a kingdom of eternity where you're going to have joy and peace, life forevermore. Anything you want in life, you've got to pay something. Anything in life you want in this life here, you've got to work for it. Okay, man? So, all right, we're here to work. But the church is here to work. It's here to serve God, to serve his purpose. Praise the Lord. I'm almost finished here. So, we are the church. Now, we are the body of Christ. Jesus is still the same in this world through his body, the church. Okay. And let me give you five testimonies here, and I'm going to tell you why these things are happening here. You see, I said the world, Jesus Christ, come to save the broken heart, to heal the broken heart, give deliverance, set the captives free. Amen. Well, in the past five weeks, I received a desperate phone call from somebody living about 700 miles from the state of Virginia here. I received this desperate phone call, and the person said, you're the only one that can help me. And this person was going to get in their car, and this person was going to drive down here all by that person's self there and just head on down here. Because you're the only one that can help me. What does this person know about me? This person known about me that I follow Jesus. Can you say amen? I said, this person could not call anybody else. This person could not get any help from anybody else. Amen. I did not like the idea of this individual driving down here in that state there. So I convinced the individual not to come. But we got the minister. Amen. A week later, I received another desperate phone call from another person living in a state outside of Virginia. This person had texted me and said, can I call you? When can I call you? So psh, I said, well, you can call me anytime you want, except for maybe this hour I'll be in a meeting, okay. And about 10 minutes later, I get this phone call from this individual here, another person outside of the state of Virginia, okay. And this person here says, these were her words, okay, you're the only one I can call. The other one said, you're the only one that can help me. You're the only one I can call. This person here was desperate. This person here was suicidal. This person couldn't take it anymore. So I told this person here, I said, listen, this is what I want you to do. I want you to take, hold on to your phone for a minute because you have to hear what I'm saying. I said, I want you to take the other hand and I want you to raise it up to heaven. And I'm going to pray for you, okay? This is over 700 miles away now. And I'm going to pray for you and God's going to fill you with the Holy Ghost and deliver you from that suicidal spirit. She did what I said to do. She raised her hand, and God did what I said he would do. He filled her with the Holy Ghost. She's baptized in Jesus' name. Amen. Delivered from that. Amen. Because she called. Can you say praise the Lord? Amen. I received another desperate phone call. This one from Cambodia. I got a message, actually. And the message was, I'm in the hospital. I've been here for two or three days. I got a high fever. It won't go away. And my body is in a whole lot of pain. You've got to understand something about being in Cambodia. When you got a fever in Cambodia, you go to the hospital in Cambodia. That's why there are so many orphans in Cambodia. Because people die at a young age there. So... When I saw that message there, I picked up my iPhone here, and I went on Facebook there, and I called him through FaceTime, whatever you want to call it there, okay? And he appeared. I said, him, I'm going to pray for you right now. I says, I got my phone here, and I'm going to lay hands on you, him, 20,000 miles away. But I'm going to lay hands on you now, and when I lay hands on you, God's going to heal you and deliver you. I said, just raise your hands. And I took my hand put it on his forehead over this phone here, and I prayed in the name of Jesus. The following day, he is out of the hospital. Two days later, he's back ministering in his church. Amen. But he spoke these words to me. He said this to me. He says, amen. He says, I feel the Holy Ghost from you. I feel the Holy Ghost from you. And when you pray for a people, church, amen, they'll feel the Holy Ghost. When you lay hands on them, they'll feel the Holy Ghost. Praise the Lord. I received another desperate phone call, still from another person a couple thousand miles away from here. And this person said this, 
Because as this person was talking to me, I was counseling through the Word of God. I was just ministering the Word of God, ministering the Word of God. And encourage it, don't do anything because of your circumstances. Don't do anything if you're upset. Don't do anything if, uh, if you're angry, what have you. And she said this to me, that's why I called you. I knew you could tell me what to do. I knew these things that you could share with me. I'm saying there's a world and even a people that are crushed. Amen. And the church needs to fulfill the word of God. Here's the last testimony. Uh, every time I go to Cambodia, I wait till the last minute to get a haircut. Because I don't want to get a haircut over there. I don't know how it will turn out, so I just get a haircut here, okay? <laughs> so, I, so I've been going to this barber here for three or four years now. And he knows I go to Cambodia, so... He said, oh, you're going to Cambodia? He said, what do you do in Cambodia? I said, well, I do missions work there. He said, oh, you do? Well, okay, that's great. And we started talking a little bit. And then he paused. He said, well, what faith are you are? I said, apostolic. Okay, he didn't say anything. Okay, okay apostolic, okay. Well, what organization there about do you belong to? I said, well, United Pentecostal Church International. He said, United Pentecostal Church International? That's where I got saved in 1983. Well, I think we still got to do some work with them. <laughs> so let me kind of bring this almost to a close here. I had one of my books in my car. I said, hey, listen, I got something for you. I said, I want to give you a book. I said, I want to encourage you to read it. I said, let's see what you think about it, what have you, okay? Church, I got them all out here tonight. I want to share this with you. Take one. Take two. Take three. They're free. This is a God-given book, and I don't say that lightly. I say it because everything in this book here, when a person opens it up, and they open up their heart, amen, they'll receive the truth, and they can experience what you and I have experienced. I don't say everybody's going to believe it, and I don't say everybody's going to just run right away, but if you get this into their possession, and you, they take it into their home, I'll tell you what, they won't throw it away. They may put it on a bureau someplace. They may put it here. They may put it there. But there are going to be circumstances that God's going to lead them to this book here. This is the word of God here. This is the form of witnessing. This is the form of ministry. Amen. And when they begin to read this book under different circumstances, see, we don't know what tomorrow is. We don't know what the following days are. But I do believe there are things that are going to happen in this world here where God, people are going to turn to God. And if they can have this in their possession here, because it explains everything. Amen. So it's there as a gift for you to give as a gift to someone else. Can you say, praise the Lord? Okay. So I want to end with this here. If you want to stand, you said since you can come. When I test about, testified about these five things that just happened very recently, amen, they didn't happen by accident. I didn't plan them, okay? I didn't plan them. But I believe the reason why they're happening is because of these four reasons in part. One, prayer and fasting. Amen. I began to get deeper in prayer and in fasting. Okay, that's number one. My daughter, I have a granddaughter who lives with me, and she has to get up really early, like 5 o'clock in the morning to go to school because she goes to her school and they get to another bus, has to go to Williamsburg and all that kind of stuff there. So I volunteered to take her. So I get up every morning now, and uh, when I drop her off, I come back home. But I don't go in my house. I go into my shed. I go into a little private place there, and I spend my time in prayer before God. That's what I've begun to do and I've been doing now. Amen? Okay. Secondly, okay, taking hold of the prophecies that has been given to me by the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost has given me prophecies. I don't want them not to come to pass. So I'm going forward. I'm going fasting. I'm drawing closer to God. I'm praying. I'm giving God this time here. That's why these five things have taken place thus far, so far. Amen. Also, I'm remembering, too, Pastor mentioned this morning here, remember that the gifts and the calling of God are given without repentance. God has used me, and God wants to use, and God, I'm sure, has used a lot of you, okay? But the gifts are still there. The calling is still there. Amen. No matter how you feel, no matter what the situation is. And finally, the, first, the fourth part here, just as an example, right? Receiving the word and acting upon it. 
And what I mean by that there, when Brother Jerry Jones was here, he spoke something very profound. It only took him maybe 10 or 15 minutes to explain it, to share it. But he went into the scriptures there where in James, right, it talks about a double-minded man being unstable in all his ways. And think not that that man should receive anything of the Lord. Amen. And he said, where's this effect here? You can't be in two places at the same time. In other words, you cannot be in faith and you cannot be in doubt at the same time. Because doubt will always erase your faith. Now, he didn't say it quite that way. But that is the truth. You and I cannot operate in two settings. We are to operate through faith. And in so doing there, I took a hold of what he brought forth. And now I am applying it. And because I am applying it, yes, I confess every day when I get in prayer, Lord, I am not a double-minded man. Amen. I am not unstable on my ways. Praise the Lord. See, I'm confessing the word of God. And God's word over and over says, if you will believe. Let me leave you with the one verse of Scripture. i got two or three more here, but let me leave you with the one verse of Scripture. Praise the Lord. You see, it says here. Well, okay, I'll, I'll do this one here. Mark eleven twenty two is very familiar to us. And Jesus answering said unto them, Have faith in God. For verily I say unto you, that whosoever shall say unto this mountain, Be thou removed, and be thou cast into the sea, and shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe that those things which he saith shall come to pass, he shall have whatsoever he saith. My question is, why did Jesus put a mountain? I believe the answer is, a mountain, if you can remove that mountain, you can remove anything. Amen. If you can move a mountain, you can accomplish anything by believing. And that's what the Lord says. Believe, believe, believe. So I have to take a hold of my mind here. Amen. And I'm confessing that word of God. And I'm fighting over my own mind because I want to see the things of God accomplished. Not just in my life. I want the will of God to be done in this earth. You want the will of God to be done in this earth. Well, you and I are the body, amen, of Jesus Christ. And as you and I go forth in the will of God, God's will will be accomplished in this earth earth. Can you say amen? And can you say praise the Lord? And I'll finish with this for sure. I, I may be off track here, okay? But I believe this. When I look in the scriptures, when I look in the scriptures, everyone and everyone that came to Jesus, no matter what their need was, Jesus always met their need. And you want to know what else? They knew it. Only maybe on two occasions where Jesus says, go to the pool and wash, or go to the, uh, the Pharisees, the scribes. But as they obeyed, they received the miracle as they obeyed. And they knew it. I said they knew it. They knew it. And when we opened up to the church and people came to the apostles, and it says, you look at it, it says, and they healed every one. And when they healed every one, they knew it. They went away, away rejoicing, praising God. Even when the Lord said, don't say anything. They couldn't contain it. They couldn't contain the goodness of what God had done for them. And they went and they scattered it everywhere. And that's why they came. I saw something unique here with these five, other than the barber. But he's the one that opened up the conversation there. Every one of these individuals came, called, got in touch. They took the initiative. Because in my life, I'm not exalting myself. But I've been a witness for over 40 some odd years now. And they knew I'm a witness of Jesus Christ. And they knew that when they called me, they can call. I could help through the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. But they took the initiative. They came forward. Just like you see in the Bible, they came to Jesus. They came to the apostles. They came because they heard. They saw the manifestation 
of God's glory in the church. Can we just praise the Lord right now? I want to open this altar here. Amen. I want us just to finish tonight here with just worshiping Jesus. I want us to finish tonight as we've begun here tonight, that name of Jesus. Amen. I want us to finish here tonight, amen, and within our hearts and our souls, amen, that we know that he is the great God. Amen. He is the almighty God. Hallelujah. Amen. And you know, as you come to the altar here tonight, you're struggling in your faith. Amen. He's the healer of your faith. Amen. He's the healer of your faith. And he will heal you tonight. Amen. If you're struggling over past things, amen, God will heal you from that tonight. Amen. And if you're struggling over some past things, amen, of your past then, if somebody's done you wrong, if you want the avenue of freedom, if you want the avenue of liberty, choose tonight, amen, to forgive whoever has done you wrong. I said, choose to forgive that person, amen. Don't hold on to that, amen. Jesus said to forgive because we are the body of Christ. We are like him as he is, amen. So are we, praise the Lord, amen. So therefore we choose to forgive. And when you forgive, amen, you will walk in the liberty of the Holy Ghost. You will not be walking in the past, my friend, amen. You'll be walking in today and you'll be walking in your tomorrow and you'll be walking in the victory and you'll be walking as a witness of, of Jesus Christ. Can you say amen? He is the great I am. He is the mighty God. He is God Almighty. He is Jesus. Amen. If we can sing that, hallelujah. Oh, praise the Lord. And as you were worshiping God earlier, as you were worshiping God earlier tonight, amen, let's end worshiping God in that manner there. Let's begin thankful to God right now. Let's receive that word of God. Let's ask God for understanding. Amen. Praise the Lord. Because you're the church. Hallelujah. I just want to speak the name of Jesus. Oh, that's it. Over fear and all anxiety. That's it. That's it. To every soul that's it. held captive by that's depression. It. Oh, yes, Jesus. I speak Jesus. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah, Lord Jesus. Cause your name, amen, amen. hallelujah. Your name is power. Yes, power. Your name is healing. healing. Your name is life. Your name is life. Yes, hallelujah. Yes. Break every stronghold. And break every stronghold. Yes, hallelujah. Yes, hallelujah. Lord Jesus. Burn. This is my Jesus, hallelujah. This is your Jesus, amen. Your name, name. your name, your name is power. Your name, your name is healing. Your name, your name is life. It's life, it's not death. His name is life. His name is life. Hallelujah. in the streets Jesus in the darkness over every enemy Jesus for my family I speak the holy name of Jesus oh, 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 oh. shout Jesus Jesus from the mountains Jesus in the streets Over every enemy for my family, I speak. Hey, oh, 
supplies the need. Pastor ministered it this morning. Right where you are, I want you to reach out. Pray for somebody next to you. Every joint supplies the need. The joint is the relationship between us. The joint in our body is a connection between one part and another part. And I want us to begin to pray. I want us to begin to pray right now. Just let the Holy Ghost lead you. There's people here that need prayer, that need healing. I've just sent Brother Andrew earlier to pray for our bishop. The pain that he has in his back. If you have pain in your body, just speak it out in the name of Jesus. If you have a situation in your family, just talk to the Lord. If you're praying with somebody, you don't need to ask them what's going on. Just let the Holy Ghost lead you. Make intercession according to the will of God. It's God's will that you're healed. It's God's will that your family is saved. It's God's will that He uses you and me. Jesus from the mountain, Jesus in the 
say, shout Jesus from the mountain. Hey, Jesus is that we just sang about you feel it when we sing it there's a passion when you sing it and when we pray for people have that same passion speak that name with authority because it's through the name of Jesus when the apostles prayed they said through the name of your holy child Jesus it's the name of Jesus that this world needs it's the power of the gospel that they need and the gospel is about the story of Jesus Christ Oh, praise God. That's it. Let's just worship Him tonight. Let's just worship Him tonight. Thank you, Lord. God, we're grateful. We're thankful for what you're doing in our lives. Lord, loose your word. Loose your word through us and through our actions, through our lives this week, God. 
God, for your glory. For your glory, God. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah. This is difficult because we have a transition. But I want us to celebrate our First Lady's birthday. We have, we have that celebration. But if you're here with a special need, I want you to stay here because God is answering prayers tonight. Amen. So, you can be dismissed if you want to be dismissed. But if you want to remain here, you can remain here. Amen. But please, if nothing else, be sure to greet our First Lady. Wish her a happy birthday. Amen. They're going on vacation starting next week. We're happy for that. Thank you all for supporting us. Supporting them being able to do that. Amen. We love you guys so much. Continue to pray for one another. Support one another. Encourage one another. God's doing great things and he's doing it through you. Be blessed. We love you.